we define now what is an execution of an input output automaton. So let us remember what is a step, which is an element of a set of all transitions. So a step taken by an automaton A is an element of this transition set of transitions. And as you remember, a step is a triple. We say an action is enabled in state S if the set of transitions of A contains a step where S is the state and A is the action. So this is the input state and that's the action for some output state S prime. We said also that input output automata are always input enabled, which means input actions are enabled in every state, and the, an automaton cannot control its environment. So let us look now to executions. So an input output automaton executes as follows. It starts at some start state. So, so the start state should be part of the initial state or start states. And repeatedly, it takes step from the current state to the next state according to a step in the transition set. So formally, now, an execution is a finite or infinite sequence. You start from initial state, you perform an action, you move to the next state. Now you are in S1, you perform an action, and you move to the next state. So it's an alternating sequence of states and action, where S0 is a start state, and moving from SI to SI plus 1, a step should be part of the transition relation, trans. Okay, so let us look to an execution regarding the channel automaton here. And we assume that the possible set of messages are 1 and 2. This is a possible set of messages. There are many executions, and here is an example of three possible executions. So we use this notation to say that the queue in the channel is empty. And notice from our definition of execution, any prefix of an execution is also an execution, which include, of course, the empty sequence. That's also an execution. Just. Uh, Here's an example of three executions. So you have an empty queue. Then the channel performs an input action. And this input action is send one. The resulting state is a queue with one element, which is one. Then the channel performs an output action. Then the queue is empty again. Then the channel performs an input action, say it's send2. Then we have a queue, which has an element 2. And then the channel performs a deliver event or a deliver action, and the queue is empty. So this is a possible execution, and we said any prefix of execution is also an execution. So given this execution, just again, any prefix on executions and executions should just, if we take this part, which is the initial segment of an execution, which is here, so that's also an execution. Now let's look to the third execution. So, which can continue, this is just a prefix of that. So we start with the empty queue, we do a send one, then the queue has one element, which is one, we do again a send one which the queue has now two elements, one, one, we do ascend, because the queue has 
now three elements, each one is one. And we continue doing sense. But this execution is not fair. Why it is not fair? Because the deliver actions are enabled, but they cannot be performed. If we just refrain from performing deliver action, then we have an execution which is not fair. A fair execution allows output actions and internal action to be executed sometimes if the condition is enabled. So this is an example of unfair execution. And these are the execution that we are not interested in, actually. So now we know what is an execution. It, you start from initial state, and you perform actions and move along to a state and then perform actions. So on any prefix of execution is an execution. Sometimes we talk about execution fragments. And execution fragments are executions. The only difference between execution fragment and an execution is that an execution fragment is a fragment in the middle of an execution. So it does not require the initial element in the sequence to be a start state. So for example, this is. an execution fragment. And if it is finite, it has to end in a state, and it does not require that this is an initial state. So now let us come to a very important concept, which is the concept of traces or external behavior. So traces allows us to focus on the component's external behavior. And it is really very useful then when we define correctness of an algorithm, as you will see. So a trace of an execution is a subsequence of external actions in an execution, which would mean you take an execution, you remove the states, you remove the internal actions, then you get a sequence of external actions. And if we have an execution E, we use trace E to denote an execution, and this models the observable behavior of a component. If we think of the component as a black box and we're just observing the interface of the component. Now, let us look to an example of traces and we look to the traces of the previous execution. So here is the first execution and here is a trace for that execution, which is a send, deliver, send, deliver. We just removed the state because in this case we don't have internal actions. And for that execution, we have send one, deliver one, send two. And for that execution, the unfair execution, we have also the unfair trace, which the child is accepting sends, but it does not deliver anything. 